give more returns get more security and more interest on your fixed deposits from sri lanka's largest finance company lonc finance Hi, I'm Raju Jayawardena. Hi, I'm Joanna Jayawardena, and we will be answering Living's burning questions today. Hi, Joanna and Rajiv. Thank you so much for being on the show. Lovely having you with us. Hi. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> and love the color coordination that you all have kind of agreed on. I guess. Uh, this is it's kind of usual there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's nice. Kind of it's nice. Is. Okay, so let's uh, start with the first question. Tell us a little bit of yourselves like how did the two of you meet tell us about your story as a couple um so we met at a time that uh we were both obviously single and in a relationship and it was at an event coincidentally um i still remember i was completely distracted by my phone and myself <laughs> um so i was on my phone i think i was playing tetris if i'm not wrong <laughs> and um there were tons of people coming to this event and then this one guy just normal t-shirt jeans comes in and he starts looking at me and i was looking at him and i thought ah oh, he's kind of nice <laughs> he's very different from the rest and then um the entire evening i was of course comparing at this event the entire evening every time i looked in his direction he'd be staring at me and the minute i looked like you know a typical 6 year old kid he'd be like Okay, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. And then again, you get him looking at you. Um, and then coincidentally, again, he was known to a friend of mine who was there, and we were just very briefly introduced. Um, then it was not. Yeah, it was the next day. This certain friend of ours um, happened to call me and said, "Hi, uh, listen, I wanted to ask you something." And before he could say anything, I was like, "Is this about the guy who came with you?" and then he said yeah you know he kind of likes you and he was wondering if you guys could meet um and to be honest i've been single for quite a while and i was curious uh because he seemed different um so i agreed to meet him and uh we met at the most unlikely place which was um a rock concert at vihar mahadevi's open air theater um and trust me it was not rock it was heavy metal where everybody was literally breaking their necks and um it's not a genre i listen to me is he the type yeah. that listens to it so both of us were sitting um on this step i still remember we were talking about wine cheese uh classical music art while an entire audience was breaking their necks to heavy metal music and uh yeah it, went up from there right yeah exactly <laughs> one thing led to the other i guess and then eventually i said yes and yeah we're here today we're here eight, eight years eight right? years 9 years 8 or 9 8 years we've <laughs> been married 9 years we've been married yeah. yeah okay so 9 years all together nice um buying cheese and art <laughs> and classical <laughs> music at a rock concert yes. at a rock concert nice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and jane austen And Jane Austen. Oh, that's the one thing we actually really found in common and we liked because I like Jane Austen as an author and uh, he happened to like Jane Austen as well as an author. So it's very, you know, unusual to come across people that like the same books you like because a lot of people don't read today. No, it's a public secret that I like Jane Austen. <laughs> Okay. Is it lovely? I think you should cut that part. <laughs> no, I think let's keep that. <laughs> oh my goodness, no way. <laughs> Okay, so let's um get to tag gift boxes. How did that start? What was the journey? Um so I always wanted to have and do something of my own that I was passionate about. 
Um, and how it came about for me is um, since I was very little growing up, uh, my mom always instilled these little qualities in us from wherever we got our pocket money or whatever, which was collected and given to you during Christmas or your birthdays. You were made to ensure that you bought everybody in the family something for Christmas, like a small gift even, and this was from a very young age. So when you're given like a tiny budget even, you had to buy either a small key tag, a tie, whatever we could afford from our own things. And for me, the whole presentation and the making it feel personal to whoever I was giving it to, it mattered to me. Because I think um, no matter what happens when someone receives a gift, it makes them feel really special. Then you open up the gift and when it's things that you truly like, like you know, it's your favorite color sometimes, it might be your favorite fragrance, there might be something edible there that happens to be your all-time favorite or something that you munch on all the time. That makes you realize that that person put so much thought into your gift. They know you, they care about you and they wanted to make you feel so special. I think that mattered to me. So that's how Taggy took off. I did about one year of research, finding suppliers, um, doing my little background, all of that. And um, then surprisingly when I decided to kick it off, that's when Covid hit. And it was exactly when I launched, just one month after that, Covid happens, shutdown happens and I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, there goes like this whole dream I had and everything I wanted to accomplish. But it just happened the opposite of what I expected because it was a shutdown and when they started getting in transportation and delivery, some suppliers started working with us. And then I thought, okay, you know what? It might be this much of a cost, but we can manage it. And then during a lockdown, I actually got orders uh, from quite a few corporate clients as well as individual. Um, I remember my first order was eight boxes, eight gift boxes to a doctor. And then thereafter, it was smaller gift boxes for like Mother's Day, Father's Day, all of this during a time of a lockdown where people couldn't actually reach each other. They couldn't see their family, friends, loved ones, they were locked up. There was so much frustration brewing in people, you know. So this was kind of, it was nice. I felt like I'd been given this little cape, like a superhero cape to go and do this thing, to make fee people actually feel happy. And it felt good. And I still remember a few orders I got uh, from overseas, from individuals. Um, out of them all, there was this one girl who really stuck in my head, Anu. She uh, wanted a gift box done for her mom and her dad. And because of the lockdown, she hadn't seen them. This was later on, but she hadn't seen them in almost three years. And she was so sad and she felt really down. And this going to her mother, the father had like recorded a video of the mother in tears, so happy. And I realized how much that connect meant and how such a small thing can make such a huge difference. So that's how Taggy kind of came to being and now it's just grown. I mean, it's corporate, it's individuals. I still have the first clients I work with who continued working with me. They started with individual boxes, then they introduced me to their officers and then it just kept branching out from there. So, um, I mean, thanks to the blessings of all these wonderful people, I was able to build this network and keep growing it. So, tag in a nutshell. <laughs> Not very much a nutshell, but... <laughs> wow, nice. Um, so, given that you've started your own business, how has your previous work experience helped you with this in your journey? Uh, I think... Just the one thing that I took from my previous work experience was um, I think it was my boss, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention names but I should mention his name because he made a huge impact in my life, uh, almost like a parent. Um, he was very tough on me, <laughs> he was very ruthless but he always reminded me that his ruthlessness was because he believed in me at times that I didn't even believe in my own abilities and teaching me little disciplines, uh, teaching me little ethics, uh, being that real kind of tough parent situation on you, I think it helped me grow and become a better person, a 
you know, help me be more open, help me evaluate better, help me plan myself, organize myself better. So I think when it comes to previous work experience, he's the one person out of my entire work journey I will thank, which is my boss Manish Fernando, uh, the, I think the head of Hilton Sri Lanka now. He instilled uh, all these really good qualities in me. Um, and I was much younger at that time. And for me, <laughs> most of the time, I just wanted to throttle his neck. But um, I'm really grateful because everything he taught me today has helped me manage timelines, has helped me manage stress, and has given me the one thing that I'm really proud to say I have is a can-do attitude. I don't think I say no to things. I say, yeah, let's, let's see how we can do this, you know. Um, let's try something. If we can't find this, maybe we can do this. I think that all came from that previous work experience. So yeah, um, and also working for an international chain like Hilton was really great for me because it really molded me into the professional I am today. Nice. So this is a question for the two of you all. Each one can answer. Mm -hmm. um, how would each of you describe your own work style? Okay, I'm more of a process driven guy, e even let's say in my personal life also. So if I, before I start anything, what I do is uh, I write, list everything down, what, are the, what I have to do, the tasks, and I execute one by one. So there is a process and I won't miss anything at the end. So even at work, I always define the process before I communicate it to my team members and define it so there will be less conflict or risks involved with the tasks that they have to do or I have to do. So I'm more of a process driven guy. Um, me, uh, how would I describe my work ethic? Well, I think I like a challenging environment. I also think that I work better as much as I want to have my hair out under stress and tight timelines. I mean, I would complain endlessly about it at home to myself saying oh my gosh I can't believe they gave me this many days but somehow I have some thrill that I get out of it when I know I'm just breaking my back and I can't stand or breathe I think that helps me um, I don't know push myself better I, I like that continue to continuity of work um, and yeah I, I think I'm also very organized planned and like I mentioned to you before, very OCD, so um, technically have to check everything before it goes out, if not, <gasps> so yeah, yeah. That's So that's the good stress kicking in? That is good stress, I think it, um, it just, it, it, it makes you a little more um, open to little mistakes or changes or anything that you need to fix up, so you're, you're better at evaluating and looking into something the next time it happens and you do it better so yeah so what do you think are the significant challenges facing small businesses today and how do you measure success um, okay so um, challenges facing small businesses today I'll take it on a local context on a Sri Lankan context because that's obviously familiarity I think changing mindsets traditionally is a challenge for everybody. I think any industry will face that. People are used to brands, the traditional brands they know. So when you suddenly try to introduce a new product of, let's say it's a home baker, or it's a craftsman, local, or it's someone producing organic body lotions, butters, whatever it is, People are like, oh, is it a good brand? I mean, I haven't heard of it. Um, so there are these challenges for smaller businesses, which makes it very tough on them because they are always, um, they, they get camouflaged by the larger businesses. So I think um, that primarily is one of the biggest challenges they face. Um, I, I wouldn't say there are other challenges for small businesses than that because we are in a day and time where we have everything at our fingertips. I just think if you want to succeed, you've got to be persevering. 
Um, and in my output of measuring success, it's the end result, the final product. Uh, when it comes to better than you expect it or have expected it to be, that's when you know it's been successful. So that's success to me. But, um, and also the quality also, because I've seen her change products even though from her suppliers. Majority of her suppliers are very good. They have some standard and quality, but minority I see she has to change products over and over again. She has to reach out to different uh, suppliers because she has promised someone else a quality product. But if she cannot deliver it, then it's her company or her name, right? Uh, so people need to consider when they're supplying goods about quality. Quality matters a lot. So there's a saying, I guess, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. So day in, I guess every order she has to go through that. So somehow she manages to deliver the right goods at the right quality for her supplier. So that's why I admire her enthusiasm, commitment to make sure that she gives the right quality goods to her clients. That's really nice to hear. <laughs> okay. So what, can you tell us on some of the most important aspects in maintaining a good relationship with suppliers because you have brought this up as well, right, your yeah. suppliers, uh, especially the local crafts yes. and arts and stuff like that. And if you, and how do you handle a conflict if you are faced with one? Okay, so managing suppliers, I think you, this, this is my theory to everybody in life. It's not about your supply only, it's just about life. Manage your life with empathy. In other words, put yourself in another person's shoes. You want something done when it comes to business, you have to understand there's a payment involved in it. Understand that those people also may be smaller people, they may have a lot of commitments, they might not have a billionaire bank account. So when you want something done, ensure that you at least pay them in advance to get it done. So the first thing is understand the financial needs of suppliers. When you start maintaining that good relationship with your suppliers where you know an order comes in, you pay them the advance you get them and the minute they deliver you sort their balance payments, that is the first healthy aspect in business, right? Because then they don't have to chase behind you and feel like they have to beg you for something and you don't have to do the same. This is good for everybody in business, whether you're a big business or a small business, because it shows how empathetic you are towards the other person. You understand that, you know, Maybe they come from this, maybe they come from that. You're taking guesses here. But that in return, I promise you down the line, will make a platform for where suddenly, let's say you're faced with this amazing 2000 pack order and the client is going to take one week to give you the payment. But the minute you tell that supplier that you've been working with for so long, look, this is coming, but I will have this one. No problem. I'll get it done, Joanna. We'll start the production. So that through that, what has happened is they build trust and faith in you. And that's a really good relationship on the long run. Um, learning to speak to them nicely. Also, like, like Rajiv said before, I think process is very important. So maintaining proper communication from the time you get the order till it's executed. Make sure you tell them exactly what you want. Make sure that's backed up in writing or something digitally. And then when he comes, check it before you send it out to your client because you're responsible for it. You can't at that point turn around and tell the supplier, I expected this. No, you're responsible for that. That way, if at that point there is something, you can always go back to them and say, look, this, this wasn't like this. We need to change it a bit and you need to send me the stuff back. They'll actually do it for you. So I think when you maintain that healthy relationship where you respect more than anything, I think when you respect a person, you will get it back in return. And that's how the relationship bonds and becomes stronger. And I think I am very confident to say this because people I started with are still working with me right yes. now. I've, I've been, we've been so consistent that we went from business associates to now friends. Um, I can call them even at the 12th hour and I know that they will somehow pull through and accommodate for me because I know quite a few of them have done that. On sometimes uh, 48 hour timelines where we have to do like 200 boxes in 48 hours and they don't necessarily have to do it for me even though they are getting paid, yes, but they support me. They somehow say, don't worry about it, we'll get it done, okay, we we'll do this as a team. That I think is the most important thing in a relationship with your suppliers. Um, managing conflict, 
this is something I'm really bad at. No? You're good at this. Yeah. So I manage conflicts, uh, face-to-face conflicts. Uh, by listening to the other person. So if I counter that person, it will lead to a different conflict. Or we won't achieve what we want to achieve or we wouldn't derive at the answer that we are looking for. So conflicts are always good if you manage conflicts. So I encourage Joanna also to solve conflicts through verbal mediums such as a phone call, face-to-face meeting, because I, I won't encourage anybody to solve conflicts through WhatsApp, email or any other written medium. If you want to solve it, then get into a call, face-to-face meeting and solve it because it will definitely give you the outcome. If you manage the conflict properly, you'll find the answer that you're looking for through conflicts. So I've always believed that and it has worked for me in my line of business and it's a very stressful line of business. I work in the software industry. So yeah, it has worked for me and I always encourage you to do the same as well. I agree because I think uh, when it comes to whatever I've learned in conflict management, it's thanks to him. Um, Yeah, let's face it, right? I'm the hot tempered one. I get worked up like a soda bottle really fast and then I just like... I just go all, I go from being completely sober human being to being the exorcist overnight. Um, and then, I mean, even in our relationship, I, I would be the hot-tempered one and he's actually managed it more calmly. So I have learned from that and I've also seen the results of it. So I know that, yes, that's true. Even at a time that your emotions are really high and you're really annoyed with the person, it's, it's better to just take a breather, not say anything you know, get your thoughts together and then when you're ready to take it like an adult, then you come and take it like an adult. You have what you call a conversation. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. So the two of you work in two different industries. So how, what parts of your individual jobs kind of push you outside of your comfort zones? With some examples maybe? I would say conflicts for me because every day there are so many problems that I have to find solutions. So I think that will defin- that actually pushes me out of my comfort zone and it allows me to learn as well through conflicts and problem solving. So I think that's the main key point that pushes me out of my comfort zone. Problems and conflicts. Mm, Timelines. I think that pushes me out of my comfort zone because It gets me to a level that I will work faster, better. I think that's also where that uh, can-do attitude comes out of, where you don't say no. Because I think uh, most people today sometimes take the easy way out when they can't find it. They just be like, oh no, it's not there. So if you have that attitude, you can't go about it. So when you start being pushed with like, very tight deadlines sometimes, you're, you know, you're challenged to try to do more things, to find solutions to it. So I like that tight deadline because it helps me become more solution driven. And then when I have to achieve something, the end result comes out most of the time better than I expected to. So yeah. The key to quality and efficiency. Be a jewel. Professionalism is the jewel in the corporate crown. Refresh Sri Lanka for a civic-minded society. In association with 99X. LMD. The voice of business. Okay, hi, welcome back to our second Hello. segment of the game and we have the couples challenge for you all. Okay. So, you have to close your eyes and then I will make a statement, a question and then you point to either yourself or to your partner on 
whichever suits. Okay. You can't sort of peek. No, you can't. Don't cheat. <laughs> okay, eyes closed. Okay. okay. First question. Who is more dramatic? Who is more competitive? Who is likely to pick up a stray pet? Who is more expressive? Who is more likely to strike up a conversation with a stranger? <laughs> Who is more likely to eat something strange? <laughs> Who has more patience? Who is more likely to injure themselves? <laughs> Who is messier? <laughs> Who is more likely to lose something? <laughs> Who is more of a risk taker? Who is more likely to solve an unsolved mystery? Who is more of a hoarder? Who is more likely to run a marathon? Who gets grumpier? Who is more likely to get lost? Who would die first in a zombie apocalypse? Who would handle it better if they gave up coffee? Okay. <laughs> Who finds it hardest to admit when they are wrong? <laughs> Who is most likely to fall out of bed? <laughs> Who is more likely to fall asleep during a movie? Who has a weirder taste in music? Who would make a better superhero? Who is better at singing karaoke? Who would be more likely to haunt the other person as a ghost? In a fight, who is the fiery one? Who is more likely to freak out during a storm? Who is more likely to wear something they probably shouldn't be wearing? Who would be more likely to seek vengeance when wronged? Uh, two fingers on that one. Who has the stranger phobias? Who spends more time in the bathroom? Okay, who is more easily embarrassed? Who gets more hangry? The angry hungry? Who is the funny one? Who is the best secret keeper? Who is more likely to agree with something radical? Who falls asleep faster? Oh no, actually, change that. <laughs> who spends more time on social media? Who exercises more? Who leaves the bathroom a bigger mess? Two fingers again. Two fingers again. Who makes quicker decisions? Uh. Who cleans more? Who prefers their food spicy? Uh. Who's better at following directions to get somewhere? Two fingers. Two <laughs> fingers. I say this with traditional experience for everybody I speak for. I follow directions. Who's more easily distracted? Who has better dance moves? Before a drink. So let's go before a drink and after a drink. Before, before a drink, after. Who would handle prison better? Who has the worst habits? Who has more interesting stories? Hopefully when they're sober. <laughs> Who is the better debater? Who made the first move in your relationship? You better have pointed the finger the right way. <laughs> Who is more likely to lose their wedding ring? Oh no! Ah oh, no, wait, wait. That's actually something that can be... Why did you lose yours? No, I didn't. I'm wearing it. <laughs> no, but no, it, it's very hard to say there. Who is better at buying the other person gifts? Who is more likely to write a love letter? Who enjoys celebrating their birthdays more? <laughs> okay, the last one. Who has the biggest celebrity crush? Alright, that's the end of the game. Get up now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you have it. These are our answers to the questions and the game. Be sure to check Living's Instagram and Facebook for the latest episode of Living Gets Real. Bye-bye.